Morning biologists, in today's video we're going to look at plant defences, so that's how plants can defend themselves against pathogens, we'll look at some of their external defences and some of the internal defences of plant cells. The first thing to think about when thinking about plant diseases are the three main types of organisms that cause diseases within plants. So fungal diseases, fungal diseases are probably the main one. Fungal diseases digest living cells and destroy them. This combined with the response by in humans, the body or in plants, the cells in the plant will go and cause the symptoms of the disease. You can have viruses. So viruses will go and take over the metabolism of a cell. The viral genetic material gets into the host cell and inserts itself and causes the um, virus to be replicated within the cell. And finally, bacteria will go and infect plants. They will go and produce toxins which will go and damage plant cells, particularly affecting the cell membranes, cell walls, and damaging or inactivating enzymes within the cells. So, the first line of defense that plants have is this physical structure of the leaf. So the first line of defense in plants is an intact impermeable barrier composed of bark, a waxy cuticle, and underlying wax that will go and stop the pathogens from getting in. Physical barriers are made up of different substances. So you've got wax, cutin, uh, polysaccharides, meaning uh, cellulose primarily, that the pathogen must overcome before it can physically get into the plant and infect it. So, a plant's exterior protection can be compromised by mechanical damage, which may provide entry points to pathogens. If this first line of defence is breached, then a plant must resort to other defence mechanisms. It might produce insect repellents, for instance, pine resin or that, that citrony smell from lemongrass. It might produce insecticides. So insecticides are going to be things that are going to be toxic to insects and fungi. So for instance caffeine is an example of this. It can produce antibacterial compounds including antibiotics. These antibacterial compounds will go and disrupt the life cycle of bacteria, quite often damaging their cell membranes and enzymes within them. Antifungal compounds. So antifungal compounds are compounds that are going to target specifically funguses outside of the cells of the plant. And finally, general toxins can be made from plants, such as uh, cyanide. Right? Cyanide is really toxic to most living things. If we now go and look at the physical process of a plant's uh, cellular response. So the first thing that we need to think about is that the plant is infected by the pathogen. Some molecules from the pathogen are recognised by receptors. So when the pathogenic enzymes start to break down the cell wall, that will go and release other molecules that will be recognised by the plant or the plant cell. This will cause the activation of signalling molecules, which will go and 
almost alert the nucleus that it needs to go and respond towards this infection. The nucleus can then go and cause the transcription of DNA into RNA, which will then go to ribosomes and be translated into polysaccharides, such as callose or lignin, which are produced to help strengthen the cell wall. Or it can go and be transcribed into defensive chemicals, which can either act on the infection inside of the cell or quite often be secreted outside of the cell to go and kill infectious agents, so the pathogens, before they enter. Signaling molecules might also be produced that go and signal other cells in the plant nearby that they need to start producing or getting themselves ready to stop them from being infected with the pathogen. Attacked by pathogens, high levels of polysaccharide called cellulose or callose are produced. So within minutes of an initial attack, callose is synthesized and deposited between the cell walls and the cell membranes in the cells next to the infected area. These callos act like barriers, preventing the pathogens from entering the plant cells around the infected site. Large amounts of callos continue to be deposited in the cell walls after the initial infection. Lignin is added, making a mechanical barrier to invasion even thicker and stronger. Callos blocks sieve plates in the phloem, sealing off infected parts of the plant and stopping the spread of the pathogens. Callos can also be deposited in the plasma demata between infected cells and neighbouring cells, sealing off healthy cells from infected ones. You might want to go and have a think about some of those six key questions below. So, hopefully that goes and summarises all the key points. Make sure you go back, have a go at the questions, pause the video at any point that you're unsure about, make sure that you're making notes on the key points, and if you have any further questions, please get in contact with me or leave something in the comments below. Right, good luck.